And our program guest this morning is the man about to become the new face of the National Trade Union Movement, Dave Oliver. But before that, we'll take a look at what the Sunday papers are saying. The Queensland election is now just over, or just under two weeks away. Um, still, Campbell Newman and his business dealings, Annabelle, getting a lot of attention. Yep, so much so, in fact, that um, Campbell Newman has now promised that within 60 days, 90 days of election, if he became Premier, he would basically divest himself of all of his private interests and um, his wife would do likewise. Now, a lot of the controversy around Campbell Newman has actually surrounded uh, his in-laws um, and their business dealings. So he seems to have committed his wife to stepping away from any family interest in business dealings, any private share ownership and any kind of um, uh, public sector work if he should become Premier. It's kind of not entirely dissimilar to what Therese Rain did just shortly before the 2007 election with the slight difference that that turned out to be a completely booming commercial decision for her. Remember when she um, sold off the um, Australian arm of her business, um, her employment services business, which freed her up to go to the UK and make 110 squillion pounds, which she is currently uh, in the process of doing. But we'll have a look at how um, this has uh, been translated to, a, to an attack ad on the part of the Labor Party and then Campbell Newman's response to that. Newman's wife Lisa and brother Seb are friends with Liam Smith. They own a company together. With Campbell's father-in-law, they form another company to bid for millions from flood recovery funds. Oh, Campbell, what a tangled web you weave. So Campbell Newman has a wife, Lisa, who has a brother, Seb, who has a mate, Liam, and Liam has a dog, and the dog ate the homework and also ate the hamster. I mean, come on! Anna Bly's clinging to this sort of stuff. She's clinging to smear and innuendo like a drunk clinging to a uh, light pole, you know? I suppose, uh, Jared Henderson, it's a question of whether it's uh, working uh, for Labor. Well, it may be working, but there's a huge double standard here. I mean, the, the Coalition, the Liberal and the National Party, never did this to Therese Rain in the lead-up to the 2007 election, if they had have done so. Everyone, all the commentators and everything else, would have jumped on them. But Labor's running this uh, campaign essentially against... Campbell Newman's wife and her family who happen to be of migrant background so it's bashing up women and it's bashing up migrant business families and this is all supposed to be acceptable but um, imagine if John Howard had done that to Kevin Rudd and Therese Reid in there is a difference here though isn't it and it's the town hall connection well there may or may not be a, dif uh, a difference I mean Lots of allegations are made. It's pretty easy to make allegations. As I understand it, there have been no investigations, there have been no criminal charges. Um, I'm not aware that Campbell Newman or Mrs Newman have done anything wrong of any kind, and if they have, someone ought to come up with yeah, the Yeah, there is a bit of a flavour of hysteria to the whole thing, I think. I mean, particularly to have the, prime, to have the Premier in Parliament talking about the prospect of her direct opponent, opponent winding up in jail. I mean, it's pretty... It's pretty that well, it's a big shot to play very early on well, in the piece, wasn't yeah. it? I mean, that allegation is unhinged. To say that your political opponent's going to end up in jail, mm -hmm. if you have some evidence, OK. If you don't, um, at least withdraw it. But, George, it also feeds into the contest within the contest, and that's the battle for Ashgrove. Campbell Newman obviously couldn't get a seat uh, before the election, uh, and for whatever reason they chose a seat outside the, uh, their comfort zone for the swing they require to uh, form government. So Ashgrove is sitting on 7.1% and Kate Jones has pretty much been banging on every door in the electorate. Which is a bigger ask than the statewide swing. Mm. Yeah, he needs wide. less than 5% to form government in his own right. And if they get six, they're in landslide territory, but he needs an extra point above that to win the seat. Now, the seat is, uh, is line ball according to, uh, according to the published polls that we've seen. But the internal polls, which uh, the Sun-Herald quote, still have uh, Newman in front but that the race is tightening. And I think the way the Labor Party have set this thing up, you know, they sort of don't want to make it about them because they've been in power for 20 on thousand years in Queensland at the moment. And, um, you know, turning this thing into a referendum, uh, a, character, a character test for Newman in the seat, as well as a, uh, as well as a story about the, national, uh, the state campaign. Now, he's got a, he's got a better long like situation occurring here. Uh, he spends more time in the local electorate than he needs to be. Than it, that he wants to be, and also the seat. Although sits... on the other hand, he doesn't have to waste time in Parliament, so no, he has yeah. that as an advantage. So he had been doing that, but of course, but in the state campaign, it's a, it's a pretty big state and it's decentralised. Uh, you know, there are more regional seats in, in in Queensland than there are in any other state in the country at a, at a state election. So he's got he's got a pretty big electoral map to traverse, but he spends a lot of time locally, and also in a seat, notwithstanding the difficulty of the swing, it's actually to the left of where he wants to be to win mm. the state. So the message. 
is sometimes different. The he's all that you yeah. want. You want to yeah. spread statewide is different to what you might say. Yeah, in so he's drinking a latte in the in the local electorate and, and swigging uh, rum and coke in, anywhere else in the in the state. So he's got um, he's got. He's got a he's got a he's got a dual campaign to run, and Labor love this because it's not about them anymore. And when the the Courier Mail poll came out showing um, Kate Jones marginally in front, then uh, Wayne Swan put this proposition. I don't think that the Liberals can go for one day longer without indicating who would be their leader if Mr Newman lost. And of course, I've been obser an observer of Queensland politics for a long period of time, and I know that there are plenty of very bitter entrenched interests within the Liberal Party who will be fighting over that to the bitter end. But I'm saying to you that's not going to happen. We don't believe that we will win this. Uh, we will not return good government to Queensland if we don't win Ashgrove and other seats just like it. If we've not, not won Ashgrove, my political career is over. And I'm not joking about that. So, Jared, is it an advantage or a disadvantage that there's not a clear succession? If Campbell Newman, then who? It's not clear. Well, I don't think it's a disadvantage. The Liberal National Party should have found him a better seat than this. I mean, as I understand, Ashgrove is what I would call a kind of sandal wearer seat. It's a kind of soft left seat, um, both for li traditional Liberal voters and traditional Labor Party voters. So it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And uh, he's probably right when he says if they can't win seats like Ashgrove, it's going to be hard for them to win the election. But it would be better if there were a line of succession, but there isn't. But there is a, I mean, there's a, a substantial enough chance that in the context of a state election you've got to take it seriously. I mean, this is a proper election. It's not just a sort of let's run this up the flagpole and see who salutes. I mean, there is a palpable possibility that the party might win the election and Campbell Newman doesn't win Ashgrove. Um, well, I, guess I mean, the I assume they've have... still got John Paul Langbrook's <clears throat> number, but that would be... Well, the, I guess the electors of Queensland will work it out. If they're deeply worried about Mr Swan's proposition, they'll vote Labor. Now, um, Annabelle, when we looked at the Sunday Mail front page before, them, people might have noticed uh, ah, yes. uh, an image of James Packer wearing a, wearing a, uh, a Stetson or a Cobra. Please explain that one. Yeah, OK. So Bob Catter this week has lost his um, attempt to have seven million voting slips pulped in Queensland because they left the words Bob Catter off the Catter's Australia Party um, uh, slot on the ticket. Um, now it looks like they could actually make it the, the Catter Packer Party um, James Packer um, has given, uh, through one of his subsidiaries, $250,000 to James Packer, which I guess uh, to Bob Catter, um, give him a kick along. Catter says that he's um, been friends with Packer for a long time and it's a, it's a tribal thing with them, so he's, uh, he would have been disappointed if uh, there'd been support uh, for any other candidate. I guess that gives us a pretty good idea of Catter's continuing voting intentions on the pokers, poker machines reforms. Yeah, we'll get to the poker machine. John Singleton has tipped in $50,000 as well at the Australian Shooters Party, $100,000. So he's doing OK for money. On the poker machines, Jared, um, a, a story this morning that suggests that, the, that Labor might not proceed even with the watered-down version of the poker machine reform. Yeah, there's a story in Fairfax Media that... Uh... If Labor feels that Andrew Wilkie won't support them, they may pull the legislation out because they don't want to be defeated on the floor of the parliament. In one sense, that's understandable. On the, in, on the other side of the argument, any defeat on the floor of the parliament is not going to harm the government. I mean, the independents, Oakeshott and Windsor, are not going to support Tony Abbott. I doubt that, Tony, that Andrew Wilkie would support the coalition in a no-confidence motion. So this government's going to run its full term, in my view. I've al always held that view. And if they lost a vote on the floor of the House, on the Malaysian uh, asylum seeker issue or on this, I don't think it would do them much harm, but the government obviously does and they don't want to risk any kind of defeat. So mm. Andrew Wilkie won't compromise, it seems, and therefore <laughs> if he won't compromise, he'll vote against it and therefore the government won't go ahead with the legislation. That seems to be the argument at this stage, but there are meet meetings between Mr Wilkie and Jenny Macklin next week and that might or might not resolve the issue. That's the approach they took with the Malaysian solution. They didn't want to lose a vote on the floor of the parliament yeah. so they simply didn't have it. Although they kind of were going to have it at one point. I mean in that in that sort of incredible narrative of strange decisions and reversals and so on that constitutes the government's um, approach to this issue, there was this sort of cabinet meeting where they decided that they would put this to parliament, the Malaysia solution that is, and and, and shame Tony Abbott and pin the blame on him for subsequent boat arrivals and so on. And then eventually it, it was never brought on. Um, and uh, same thing with the pokies, the original pokies legislation that, that um, Julia Gillard signed up to Im uh, immediately after the 2010 election with, with Andrew Wilkie. Um, that one was never tested out on the floor of Parliament either. There is this sort of um, uh, kind of 
reasoning inside the government that you know one of their great strengths is that they've never been defeated on the floor of the House. I tend to think, tend to think that's a little bit overstated myself. OK, well, that's the Sunday papers. And our studio guest this morning, as I said, is Dave Oliver, who is about to become the new secretary of the ACTU. And already, as you'll see here, the coalition is gearing up for the battles that no doubt lie ahead.